I'm Alex, I sing for Chelsea Grin. Frankie Palmieri, sing for Emir. Franz, Attila. Sweden. It was snowing outside too, so it wasn't impressive. Have <laughs> 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 you been naked, been naked in public? Um, I mean, yeah, I guess I've been naked in public, you know. When you do sexual TV and acts in public, you're gonna get naked, so. I don't know what else you else do. <laughs> yeah, I was naked in public once in a dream I had, and it was fucked up, but I don't know. Sink shower, shower shower, <laughs> jerk off. Or first thing I do when I arrive somewhere, um, I wake up and then I grab my, my shit, aka my bags out of wherever they are, and then I usually brush my teeth, and then I spend the rest of my day writing on shit that isn't mine until <laughs> I play a uh, rock show later that night, and I repeat. Very, very much more descriptive. <laughs> yeah, I usually just uh -huh. wake up and uh, just check out the green room, see if it's tight, and then uh, try to get Wi-Fi, and uh, try to eat <laughs> some fucking snacks, and drink some alcohol, and uh, ruin people's lives. Tom Cruise. She's pissed. He's good looking, he's a good actor. Jamie Foxx. <laughs> He's black though, man. What the hell? No comment? Oh, Alright, uh... I don't know. I, uh... I guess, like, Johnny Depp, because he's tight. He's tight. <laughs> Ten. Ten. <laughs> uh... I'm probably like a one or a one and a half because uh, I'm not in America and it's cold. <laughs> I'm sick. Prince. No reason? Cool. Um, just uh, being a really young influenced kid by hardcore metal bands like being like 10 or 11 getting into hardcore really young kind of opened up my whole world to uh what i do now and i've never really turned back so there's lots of artists and people i could thank for that but um you know i got put up on my older brother in that sense so um yeah it's kind of a crazy long journey fast forward 15 years i'm hanging out with you and these two fucking assholes so <laughs> i guess i did all right um, I was just inspired from being a young, angry, pissed off teenager that wanted to party and do evil shit. And this is what I liked, so this is what I did. And yeah, there's not really like any set band or person that influenced me. I just, uh, just, it just, this is the path that I went down. Everything just happens for a reason. You don't really have to know why. vegetating in my house, just enjoying my bed as long as possible for the next tour, I guess. Kind of enjoying the silence. <coughs> that kind of thing, I guess. <laughs> um, shower steam is starting to make it. Blowjobs, um, <laughs> graffiti, hard drugs, good food, <laughs> uh, good beer, my few, like, choice friends I have, like, you know, they're back home in New York, what's up guys? And, not uh, here. Not here, and, um, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's other, other things I'm missing from the list. Oh, money. Money's a big one. <laughs> Getting paid is a huge thing for when I'm not um, working on music, um, counting cash, so uh, I think that's really about it. Uh, I like to get drunk and have sex. With guys. With boys or girls, whatever, doesn't matter. Not to be like dissected and probed and touched weird. I don't know. 
About to get fucked, I guess. I don't want to be the official alien pussy inspector. <laughs> <laughs> I would want to be like the king of the aliens so I could just make them all my slaves and uh, force them to do shit for me. I would rule. Barely in seventh grade, I just went to like a local like hardcore show, kind of just like they just have them like in the like alleyway of this pizza place kind of deal, and it was just like a bunch of I don't know. Ever since then, I kind of sealed the deal, I guess. Just saying that for the first time, just afterwards thinking it was awesome, I guess. Um, my first concert experience was uh, a show, one King Down show in like. I don't know, Amityville, New York, or something like that, and, um, I don't know, I was, that's it, I was like 10, 11 years old, and I freaked out, and I sang all the words, and, you know, that's it, I just, that was the, the fucking pinnacle of my young childhood of getting introduced to heavy music like that, so, that was the one. Uh, when I was young, like, 12 or 13, I visited my cousins up in New Jersey, and, uh, they, uh, brought me to a bunch of, like, hardcore shows and stuff like that, and it was just... I'd never seen anything like it, and it was fucking crazy. And a bunch of people got beat up, and it was crazy. And I knew I knew that I liked it, and uh, <laughs> I just got hooked. It's like a drug; you get addicted. I feel like this is kind of like an intervention or something. <laughs> we all made terrible like choices, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just don't do anything we talk about. It's fucked up. One. None. <laughs> yeah, none. Because <laughs> you shouldn't have to sell shit to be happy, but it's not the real world. You have to make money to be happy, so that's the way it is. It'd be cool to get big off just that first record. And calls from then on. <laughs> Um, I think like tracking it, cause like when, well for me anyway, <coughs> if I have like a song idea in my head and like a vision of a song, it always kind of comes out a little bit different when you actually track it, you know what I mean? I don't know. Um, I find myself having no creative hurdles in life. Everything I do is completely organic and fluent from front to back. So, uh, yeah, neither. <laughs> neither. It's probably harder for me to record just because like there's... Uh, it takes a long time. It's a lot of shit to do, I guess. It's just playing, I guess. Just traveling to different countries, I think, is the best part. <clears throat> Go all over the place and just playing new music to random people that seem to dig it. Um, to answer the question uh, bluntly, my favorite part of music business is music care less of the business part. Music is where it matters the most. Uh, my favorite part about the business is just traveling and uh, seeing people that are equally as stoked as I used to be when I was a kid. Celine Dion. I, I cried today to listen to some uh, some T.I. Justin Timberlake song that I think Dead and Gone. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I, was, yeah, yeah. I was like legitimately tearing up today listening to that song. That song is really good. But I mean, if you don't, if you don't get emotions from songs, then you don't, shouldn't listen to music at all together. So, that's all I think. Yeah, I, just, I don't even think I've ever really cried ever. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think it's more like out in like the European countries, um, like even if the kids are, you know, they're into it, like you get on stage, you have all these people that are just like kind of watching you with like a blank face and you think, oh, we suck tonight. And then, you know, you get off and you go hang out at the merch table or whatever and all these kids are like, oh, you're fucking awesome. You know, like, like it's just like the blank, cold stare look, I guess. I don't know. Uh, weirdest concert experience, you said? Uh... I don't know, every concert's fucking weird. Every, con every <laughs> concert should be weird. The concert isn't weird, and it's not interesting, it's not different, and it's fucking boring and stupid, so... There's your answer. My weirdest concert experience was in Czech Republic on Valentine's Day last year, I think. And, um, not a single person came to the show. So we, uh, stood on stage, 
and I just like sat down and drank alcohol and made up words and it was kind of stupid and uh, yeah, whatever. I don't think I'd change anything. I think like where I'm at in my life right now is something I think is pretty awesome. So I don't, if I, I figured if I changed anything, I wouldn't be here where I'm at. You know, no lessons learned, nothing achieved. So I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> no, I'm good. If I could live like a second life, like a double life and go back and just keep this one too, I would just go to school and like, Probably become something like smart, big money, go, and have a big house and like <laughs> sweet cars and shit. Probably do something like that, you know, just to switch it up. Role model fronts. I guess. But <laughs> I still party and do drugs, probably. So. Michael Jackson. Switch place with someone. You're gonna give me a second on this. <laughs> Definitely a fucking good one out there. Oh, Hugh Hefner. Oh, Easy. Yeah, there you go. Easy <laughs> answer. Easy answer. <laughs> what up, Hef? Um, I don't know. For some reason, I just keep thinking like uh, Frodo Baggins because he lived in like a little green hole and uh, he's tight. He's tight. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, our band is writing a new album. We're trying to release a full length, to, like try to track it in the summer during some time. Like, like no real rush, but that's about all it is for us. And it's the constant tour grind. Yeah, Emir is a uh, full time touring this year. We're doing a world tour that we're actually currently doing as we speak. Um, going uh, into the studio probably in the in the fall to record a new album, mm -hmm. and then uh, any Emir fan out there can expect new music in 2014. Attila just finished recording a brand new album with Joey Sturgis and it comes out uh, this summer in June while we're on Warp Tour and uh, it's gonna be fucking crazy and it's gonna offend a lot of people Offensive. and uh, yeah it's gonna make a lot of people mad but I don't really care and it comes out in June so check it out it's gonna be tight. Um, I mean just continue to check us out I guess like we'll come, keep coming back as much as we can and I guess that's that. <laughs> um, yeah, most, my message is that Leprechaun is a scary ass movie, and I respect the fuck out of you motherfuckers for making that shit. One, that shit is one sick. two, three, or four. Uh, my message is Ireland's tight, keep it green. <laughs> um, we'll keep coming back, and uh, just like, what would Franz do? Just party. Ireland's tight. Are these, are these really the 20, 20 weirdest questions? This is the best that I could find. Right, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry, but uh, sorry. yeah.